Hello everyone. Today we are talking about attack trees as a tool to support threat and risk analysis. We talk about the advantages of attack trees and we also talk about when you should not use attack trees. I'm Holger from IDK. Our today's topic are attack trees as a tool to support risk analysis. Sebastian, I'm looking forward to your questions. Hello, Holger, and welcome to our ITK Cybersecurity YouTube channel. And I'm really happy that you're here in this video because you're one of our uh, great experts on risk analysis. Yes. So I have a very first question. From your experience, how does the landscape of threat and risk analysis looks like today? Yeah, from my experience, the landscape of risk analysis methods that are actually used today is quite diverse. So we see that in different industries and sectors, of course, different methods are used. So, for example, in the rail sector or in the industrialization sector, other methods are used than in the vehicle or automotive domain, as an example. But even within the automotive domain, we see that there are different ways to model attack path, for example, or different ways to, to rate the attack feasibility. So to decide how hard it is actually for an attacker to carry out an attack. Of course, in, especially in the automotive industry, we observe strong efforts um, towards a consolidization of the methods, towards the ISO SAE 21434, of course. But um, even this standard leaves open a lot of degrees of freedom to actually tailor the method according to your project. And um, so on the one hand, for the attack path modeling, we see that attack trees are used. On the other hand, we also see that, let's say, more coarse-grained methods are used. And for the attack feasibility rating, then, what we usually see are methods like the common criteria or EVITA or CVSS. Okay, got you. So, um, you said there are different methodologies, um, how to model the system and how to evaluate the system. So my question would be, are you aware of a promising approach to um, do the trust, to, to um, make a valuable foundation for the trust in the perspective of modeling? What would be your recommendation? Yes, yeah, so in my opinion, attack trees are a really promising approach. So to give you a short explanation, attack trees are a way to model and to visualize um, attack path in a structured way. So in an attack tree, the root node of this attack tree usually models the goal of the overall attack. So let's say prevent the vehicle from breaking. And then you have child nodes of this root node, which model then the different attack steps that an attacker has to take in order to fulfill the overall attack. Um, those child nodes can be connected to the root node in one of two ways, either via a so-called OR connection. This then means that the attacker can pick one attack step and this one attack step is enough to fulfill the overall attack. Or the child nodes can be connected to the root node via an end connection and this then means that the attacker has to take each and every attack step in order to complete the attack. And then these child nodes can be further broken down until you have modeled your system to a sufficient um, level of detail, which then means you end up with a set of attack trees that basically model all of the attack paths into your system. And then in the next step of the risk analysis process, you usually rate the attack feasibility for each and every leaf node of your attack tree. So for every leaf node, you decide how hard it is for an attacker to, to fulfill this attack step. And these attack feasibility ratings for the leaf nodes are then propagated up your tree to the root node via some mathematical methods, some propagation logic. And this last step, this propagation step, is then a purely computational and um, mechanical step. 
So Holger, you are pro um, promoting the attack tree based approach. So what is from your perspective and your experience with hundreds of risk analysis I know of, um, what is the biggest advantage of an attack tree? In my opinion, the biggest advantage definitely is the flexibility that attack trees provide. Yeah? So the reason for this flexibility is that given you have a good set of attack trees, then let's say you have to make a change to one of your attack trees, then you usually can easily localize where exactly in your attack tree landscape you have to make this change. And this brings you a lot of benefits. So, for example, in terms of flexibility, you can uh, vary the level of detail on which you model your system or the attacks. So, as an example, let's say you have some embedded device that is connected to an IT backend. And let's say this connection from your product to the IT backend is secured via TLS. Then it might be okay to model attacks on this backend connection on a more abstract level. But at the same time, you can decide to say, um, I model the attacks on the physical interfaces of my embedded device in a far more in-depth way. Another advantage in terms of flexibility is that you can modularize the attack trees. Yeah, so you can encapsulate a set of attack steps or you can encapsulate a, a part of your system within one attack tree. And then you can take this attack tree and reuse it in other attack trees. And then, of course, obviously you have the benefit that if you make a change to this one reusable attack tree, then this change has an effect on each of the positions where you have attached this one attack tree. And then the final advantage that comes to my mind in terms of flexibility are um, that you can easily bring in security measures in your attack trees. You usually do this by um, localizing the node in your attack trees or the attack step in your attack trees, which is now harder for an attacker to fulfill because you have security measures here in place. And then you simply adapt the attack feasibility rating of this node accordingly. So you're saying flexibility is the major advantage of the attack tree approach. That, that is interesting. W what other advantages can you think of um, referring to the attack tree approach? Yeah, another advantage that comes to my mind is that um, attack trees are a very good basis for the traceability of your basically your whole um, development project. So, of course, it's a goal of each and every um, risk analysis method to provide you with an overview of um, the risks that a certain attack poses to your system. But what you get in addition to this with attack trees is kind of a list of entry points to your system. So a list of um, points that an attacker can use to, to exploit your system and kind of a prioritization of these entry points with regard to the risk they cause. And this is obviously a very good basis for the security requirements you need in your project and also for the um, design decisions that you then take in your project. Okay, got you. So that is really promising. So you are referring to a lot of advantages. What would you say? Does that mean that the attack tree approach could fit to every project, every system, every scope you have out there? Is that the one and only one size fits all solution? I guess you will already expect the answer, Sebastian. Um, unfortunately, it's no attack trees are not a one size fits all solution for every kind of project. So, for example, if you um, have to deal with a system that is very large and complex and then consists of a lot of components, then it might be a bad choice to use attack trees for this. So um, an example for such a system could be an IT backend where you probably have tens or even hundreds of servers. The problem here is that when you use attack trees, you end up with a large number of attack trees that you actually need to model your system. Um, these attack trees are intermingled in some ways. And then it can be the case that the mathematical yeah, peculiarities of your propagation logic become a problem. And you might end up with wrong risk estimations. 
Another example for such projects where a tech trees might not be the best choice are actually development projects that are at a very early stage and where a lot of technical um, details of the system, maybe even some use cases of the system are not finally determined yet. Okay, okay, got you. So um, I'm still motivated to, to use those attack trees for the systems we have to analyze and we are doing that and you are doing that in many, many projects. So what would you say for all the ones um, for, for which the attack tree is the fitting approach, um, how easy is it to make use of an attack tree? Think of a company that is using a more classical approach. Um, how would you say is the effort and the easiness of the approach? Yeah, I would say it's rather easy to at least start with attack trees, especially if you have some preliminary, more coarse-grained attack or risk analysis already at hand. So what you can then do is you take the attacks that you have already modeled and simply split them up in attack steps and then start to rate these attack steps, the attack feasibility of them independently. Um, this means you kind of have a way to evaluate this attack tree um, approach for your project. However, you will pretty quickly come to a point where you see um, these propagations that you have to calculate. This can, it's no longer feasible to do it manually, which means you need some tooling support to do this. And another issue is um, that you need to establish guidelines for how you deal with certain situations, how you model certain attacks to your system, for example. However, to that point, um, you need such guidelines, no matter which attack path modeling approach you actually choose. In my opinion, the attack trees just make this need kind of more obvious. Okay, got you. That's, that's interesting. That's a good catch. So um, my final question to you, and we have learned a lot about attack trees in this today's videos, and I hope that all of our um, uh, viewers uh, who have not subscribed already to the channel are doing it after this video because we have tons of information more for you in the, in the following videos. But back to the attack trees. What are the key take-home messages for our audience, what would you say, what should they take home uh, to start with the attack tree approach? Yeah, I think the key messages are, in my opinion, attack trees are a very powerful tool to support risk analysis, especially for, um, let's say, products that somehow rely on embedded devices. Yeah, so the first advantage of attack trees is the flexibility they provide with regard to this varying level of detail on which you can model your system with regard to this modularization, which allows you to encapsulate certain parts of, of your system and to do this residual risk analysis, this analysis that takes countermeasures into account to do this easily. And the second big advantage of attack trees is um, the basis for traceability they provide for all of your security requirements and design decisions with regard to security measures you took in your project. Um, but, as I've said, attack trees are not a one-size-fits-all solution. So they might be a bad choice, for example, for large projects with a lot of um, components, or they might be a bad choice for um, uh, development projects which are at a very early stage and where a lot of details are not clarified and determined yet. Uh, which means overall that if you plan to introduce and roll out attack trees as the way to model attack path in your business unit or in your whole organization, you should carefully check whether those attack trees are really a good choice, at least for the majority of your development projects. Holger, thank you for all the insights on the attack tree approach. That was interesting. I really liked it, an amazing video for our uh, subscribers and all the ones who want to be a subscriber in the future of the ITK Cybersecurity video channel. Thanks a lot. Welcome.